This is Diana with You Can Do the Rubik's Cube. This presentation is about productive struggle and growth mindset. First of all, what is productive struggle? Productive struggle is a process of effortful learning. An example of what this may look like in a math class would be to start the lesson by presenting the students with a new type of problem and giving them independent work time to study and try their own methods to attack the problem. Independently, then maybe in pairs and small groups. What is key here is to allow them the opportunity to try their own strategies and skills before doing anything that is teacher focused. This is important because it prioritizes the student centered portion of the lesson. Students see that they have the power to control their own learning. It also builds authentic engagement. Students get invested in the problem. Productive struggle tasks create opportunities for assessment, intervention, and feedback. Consider the task of creating the checkerboard pattern on a Rubik's Cube. In watching students attack this problem, you'll be able to see if students are able to visualize the turns needed to create the pattern, if they have any problems keeping the orientation of the cube the same throughout the process, and then if they can think backwards to undo the pattern. Productive struggle is not the fastest way to an answer, so these tasks build a student's perseverance. If I presented a new problem to my students, for example, asking them to find the area of the classroom, the fastest way to get an answer would be to give them the formula, area equals length times width. However, letting students grapple with the task themselves will build perseverance and deeper engagement. The Mind Research Institute lists eight habits that promote productive struggle. I've highlighted ones that particularly apply to solving the Rubik's Cube. Number two, praise students for perseverance in problem solving. Number four, provide the students with non-routine problems that can't be solved with a memorized formula. So although my previous example of finding the area of a room can be solved with a formula, be sure to present a mix of problems, including those that are not easily solved with a formula. Number seven, allow students time to ask questions and tinker with ideas. Give students free exploration time with the Rubik's Cubes before providing any tips, giving them the opportunity to develop their own strategies and see how the pieces work and interact. And number eight, encourage having a growth mindset. So what is a growth mindset? Carol Dweck says, a growth mindset is when students understand that their abilities can be developed, particularly through hard work and dedication. This mindset creates a love of learning and resilience. A growth mindset also supports brain development. Every time a student pushes out of their comfort zone to learn something new and difficult, neurons in the brain can form new and stronger connections. So what might this look like with Rubik's Cubes? First of all, allow students time to try their own strategies before offering tips, videos, or the solution guide. Give students problem-solving challenges, like making and solving the checkerboard pattern, creating letters on one side of the cube, etc. And remember to praise the process. Praise and reward the use of effort, strategy, and progress. You may visit our website for more resources. If you have any questions or would like to see some of the research behind productive struggle and growth mindset, feel free to email me as well.